effective policies to address inequality, it's been demonstrated, are not actually destroying uh, the wealth uh, at the top, which is almost certainly going to be futile to try to do that through, uh, through policies. The most effective means to address inequality are through increasing wealth at the bottom of the pyramid. And remittances can make a contribution there. Um, and of course, the most effective policies um, for inequality are universal education and remittances. We've seen that can actually mobilize extra funds that can be used um, to send children to, to school from some of these families instead of having to um, having to work. Uh, and then finally, climate uh, action. This may, may not be an obvious case in terms of linkages, but of course, the growing effects of, of climate change are actually creating more and more of the incidences of, um, of migration. Um, so there's a very direct effect uh, there. Countries in Central Asia, um, Sub-Saharan Africa, Pacific Islands as well. It's climate events that are creating a lot of um, migration. And the money that is sent back through remittances um, holds um, a lot of potential to actually contribute to maybe climate adaptation projects um, that could uh, stem the future flows of migration. So that there could be a link there between um, the cause of that migration, but actually then the remittances in terms of um, providing uh, some of the solution actually from within the community. Um, so those are just four of the uh, SDGs that I'll touch on uh, for now, and uh, happy to go into more detail later. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Interesting, and, and with so much of trillion dollars being talked about in remittances, that money coming in, and, and we can look at education too, as you said, right? Apart from gender uh, equality, no poverty, climate adaptation, and equality. Uh, Mr. Paul, coming to you and, and being from the ministry, uh, would you guess we'll talk a bit about the work you're doing, and also from the government perspective, and from the ministry perspective that you, you are part of, what are the SDGs you think? Is, is where remittance and financial inclusion has a, play, a role to play and accelerate the achievement of its duties. Yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. First of all, thanks to the organizers for inviting me to the prestigious occasion. Uh, let me introduce you about the ministry which I am representing, what it is doing for attracting remittances, uh, which is the main requirement for uh, uh, achieving the goals of, of SDGs. Uh, ministry of Overseas uh, was renamed in 2013, uh, before it was Ministry of Labor, and uh, it has three dimensional role. Number one is uh, to promote an export of manpower uh, through direct or indirect sources, I mean from the private sector as well as the public sector. It has issued about more than 3,000 um, licenses uh, to private sector and uh, three of them in the public sector. The second goal is to <coughs> welfare of the overseas Pakistanis and they're uh, tackling their problems abroad, whereas some of them are returning there. So the reintegration of the overseas Pakistanis, they a third rule. For that, the ministry has adopted two policies. One, to build confidence to the immigrants before proceeding abroad. The government fully insured all immigrants uh, by paying only $20 against the policy coverage of $10,000 per five years. And if the, any immigrant comes before five years, the policy remains valid till the expiry of the five years. And after payment of again $20, it can be renewed for further five years. So this will build the confidence of the all immigrants and uh, the pre-departure orientation, they were asked to send remittances through legal channels so that they can be further be incentivized in, within Pakistan 
to their families as well. When they are living all insurance, uh, the beneficiaries, uh, including the families of their uh, the immigrants, we uh, have the data of the families, their uh, addresses, their contact addresses, and uh, for the welfare of their families, we have different packages uh, within Pakistan about their education, about their health, so that the immigrants have uh, maintained the full confidence on the government policy. Number two is the transfer of remittances. As you know, it, uh, the, before 2009, uh, the government is receiving only $6.4 billion yearly. Uh, but on the introduction of the new scheme by the government is PRI, Pakistan Remittance Initiative. Under this initiative, the immigrants have many incentives. Uh, they are, first of all, the government has provided a subsidy through the central bank to the commercial banks, and, uh, and some other exchange companies are also providing the facility. So they are also having the same facility. For example, our main mm, diaspora living in Saudi Arabia, whenever they send remittance to Pakistan. So the, the government reimburses 25 Saudi riyals equivalent to in Pakistan rupees on every transaction. Uh, whereas all companies have been incentivized as well, the immigrants have major benefits that they have free of charge issuance of passports and renewal as well. And they also have the duty credits when they arrive in Pakistan by importing any kind of home appliances. And uh, the third one, they have the separate counters to deal with at the international airports in Pakistan. So you can see that with the introduction of the PRI, rapidly the uh, foreign exchange remittances received gradually increasing. And in the last two years, we have witnessed 9.9 19.9 billion dollars. So, and in the, this this financial year, it is around now in nine months, it's recorded 14.4 billion dollars. So, this has achieved full confidence by the immigrants, and it depicts that the number of immigrants is not increasing as compared to the number uh, the frequency of the remittances we are receiving, because due to the Gulfization policy, the our immigrants are now being reduced. Last year we have sent about 900,000 Pakistanis to the, the Gulf countries as well, and uh, it's reduced about 50% right now. It's now it's 450,000. So the policies, uh, uh, government is also following um, some other regional forums as well for to in, to increase the remittances and its uh, uses. Pakistan is also the member of the Colombo process. And uh, it has some uh, 12 member countries, which have, which are major labor sending countries. And uh, there are five priority areas here in the Colombo process, which have thematic areas. And remittances is one of them. Pakistan is chairing the remittances working group. And uh, after mm, one year of consultation, it has submitted its recommendations to the uh, GCM. Uh, for uh, mm, for implementation of the uh, and smooth and faster uh, transfer of the uh, remittances. This is the introduction of the ministry and some other parts will be later we will describe. And in, uh, so in terms of the SDGs. And, and how remittances and its leverage for financial inclusion contributes and accelerates SDG achievement. Uh, which are the SDG goals that you think remittances directly contribute to? As regards SDGs, Pakistan is following the uh, 10C regarding remittances. Uh, it has uh, committed that it, uh, by 2030, it would come around to, uh, less than 3%. Right now, uh, it is just above the 3% mass. Uh, 
we are because of the uh, major amount is the government subsidy is given to the all companies, so they are not uh, suffering a lot, as well as the immigrants as well. As regards the uh, other countries, which are uh, uh, the members of the Colombo process, uh, you see that the remittances intervention to the uh, almost all of the SDGs, uh, like uh, if we talk about the poverty elevation, uh, we in Pakistan we have a poverty elevation fund project, and uh, it is being funded through the remittances as well. So it has multiplier effect. The uh, government has imposed uh, national policies uh, through that when to, to build the infrastructure projects and uh, um, some other, uh, also supporting some other organizations in the provincial level to uh, to uh, to address this, the problems. Uh, as regards uh, SDG goal uh, nine, is regarding industry and innovation infrastructure. The government of Nepal has confirmed that uh, uh, it has imposed, uh, it has induced the policies, uh, national policies, uh, by using remittances to build the infrastructure projects there in their countries. Um, whereas, the, as you know, the remittances have uh, in tackling all the uh, SDGs. Uh, SDG one is uh, poverty elevation, as I already told you, and the end of hunger, uh, being the developing countries, the, the in, major, in majority villages, people are suffering from that one. Uh, in the forum of the Colombo process, the Sri Lankan, Sri Lankan government confirmed that their, uh, the, their female migrant workers mostly uh, send their monies to their uh, the countries, uh, which uh, which, may, uh, which is funded uh, 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 to meet the expenditures of the um, main primary food and uh, uh, their different um, primary objectives uh, to end this situation. But in Pakistan, we are focusing on 10C of this one because uh, uh, before when this was uh, SDGs were introduced, we were about 6.2% uh, expenditure involved on the transfer of the uh, Remittances. Now it has been reduced to uh, about three percent. So we will achieve, uh, I think, the target much before. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Mr. Khan. You would like to speak about the SDGs? Yeah. Uh, linking with this uh, uh, SDGs, we are clearly uh, there are two ways uh, our experience was. One is by default, and another is by design. When I say uh, default, I come from a financial perspective. Uh, straight away, you can link with this. Uh, cost is one of the things what we discussed uh, two days. And uh, I, I really uh, come back to what I just said, the revolution, mobile revolution. One of the things is connectivity is addressed, and then the cost has been ridiculously zero, or low, I would say. Because this small, uh, you know, for that to happen, uh, a central bank has rightly recognized to work with this bottom of the pyramids. Civil society uh, NGOs and civil society groups have been shortlisted by the Reserve Central Bank, and the task of financial literacy, not only for migrants, the, the whole uh, the, the poor uh, segments of the population, mostly unorganized segments, the central bank decided the whole investment for financial literacy. I think let us invest with the civil society as a partnership. So there's a central bank NGO partnership in India, very, uh, now it's three, uh, two, three years old now, and a lot of pilots being run. Ultimately, the idea is that each block, an NGO can run a financial education center. So that's the thinking of central bank. So this is worth mentioning, and this is a take home. Uh, for this, perhaps, uh, some of your context is maybe relevant, working with the bottom of the private migrant workers. So when I come to this SDG, this is a cost reduction. This financial literacy of this mobile bank, using the mobile bank for transferring account to account. Uh, I'm talking about, when I said already we have started migration from unregulated, uh, the informal channel, regulated channels. Uh, so huge, uh, these bank accounts, no frills accounts, uh, with a simple, uh, simplified KYC. This is again an enabling policy uh, done by the central bank. 
coupled with this is uh, EKYC, e simplified KYC identity. Uh, so uh, there's a, that's why you are using the word uh, cut of the curve. Uh, whole enabling policy framework was put in place in due consultation with these uh, civil society groups and NGOs, and that has completely sped up the process of migrating. So that means safety. That itself is a big, big impact on poverty. Where the money is being, when it is being transferred, is lost along the way because it is sent to the uh, some um, uh, messengers or some even train. Uh, regular uh, travelers and all. So it's all, so that has changed completely. It's, uh, almost uh, we have uh, been able to achieve, at least for those who are uh, working uh, uh, migrant workers. So the cost is very, very low. That has been achieved. Uh, it is connected with the regulated channel. I am talking about the internal, uh, the domestic huge migration. I have not talked about the outbound migration. There are certain pieces, but still cost has come down. So this is one has been able to achieve uh, direct impact on the cost, which otherwise there is uh, it's, uh, completely is lost. Or uh, they have been spending a lot of money to say so even small amount. So this is one achievement in terms of. Then come next is the insurance. So we this financial literacy led to you remit of course you remit to save, you remit to insure. So that's the slogan we started uh, working with the migrants. So. Uh, and alongside also, there is another big initiative from the government for social security initiatives on uh, life cover, accidental cover, now health cover is, uh, is going to come. So all these coupled with that, so uh, this uh, health and uh, poverty and uh, uh, financial perspective is, it is getting addressed. It's a, it's a very good uh, uh, kind of uh, policy initiative backed by the enabling action by the civil society groups. Enabling policy, enabling action going in tandem, it was achieved. Then I said default, this is some of the, but the design is important, the strategy. So whatever the members are doing, sign, wash, access to uh, wash, water, sanitation, leading to hygiene and health. That's our project, wash. So this is, uh, uh, this uh, lit uh, along with literacy, when this strategy and this work with these migrants, we are able to use this, leverage these remittances for access to uh, literacy and remittance, access to um, uh, the sanitation and education in India. I am talking about simply put toilets. So this leverage as well as coupled with the savings and credit, topping up with the credit. So this is another good example how the SDG goal in terms of access to water, sanitation, and now energy, solar energy, because some of these uh, places off grid, we are aiming at off grid. Because India being a large context with a huge area, geographical area, although there is a great government effort going on for electrification of villages, and it has made very great strides, but still there are hamlets, homes, which are not connected to the grids. So the solar off grids on which this, uh, our education along with this financial literacy, our investment, this is a clear strategy. It will not happen without strategy by default. That's why I said that some, something happening default by migrant workers themselves. If there is something happening, then they copycat, and that's possible. But there has to be a clear strategy by design. And this is happening. But most important work, another work what we started is the small holder agriculture. Most of the small holders, these migrant workers, internal workers, they are all small holders, having one acre, half a hectare. They are thrown out of their land because they are, it's not viable. Viability of the farming is very, very low. And as a, and they are not able to uh, get organized. So no, there is a policy change. Organizing this small world agriculture, in way, that way, they are actually, they are able to hold on to the land. And the migration is also arrested. And that, that is, these are the early days we have started the work, the government, civil society. But there is a big parallel project now launched by the government on small water agriculture, including the small water agriculture, mostly they are migrants also. Because it's not viable, they are migrating urban areas. So these are the uh, uh, goals. So clearly, goal number one, and then mostly then gender equality. The migrant families, wherever the, the migrant families, only the husbands are going, the family spouses left behind. We are organizing the women as self-help groups of women. That social capital has created a huge impact in addressing the gender equality. 
So that is a clear, uh, clear link. Of course, that, uh, it's clear. It's very clear for to see. But only thing where it can happen on its own, or there has to be clear strategy. It depends on the context. So we uh, we have to have a clear design for each of these goals. How to link with the remittance? Not only the remittance. Remittance as such is only a small tool. Finance includes the whole the remittance. Then there is a big middle. It is very important. Finance includes savings to pension. In some places, these are very early days we started, where there is a big government initiative on pension. It is a defined, it is a hybrid, defined contribution, defined benefit. Uh, it is a, it's a very good scheme uh, as a source of security. Now the thing is, this, unless this literacy happens, they do not know about the scheme. And also, there is a form, there is a certain formalities to be filled up. So this identity initiative coupled with this scheme and this literacy, is connecting with the pension scheme of the government. That's so really, it's all great, that's really great days, exciting days in India in terms of not only for migrants, but for those part of the privilege. That's really interesting. One, one thing that you said was <laughs> government and civil societies, right? Government and civil societies working together on, on these kind of interventions. And that's where I believe that partnership has been one of also the SDGs that these initiatives are being able to achieve and that one of the SDG goals that is the, uh, there. Right. So overall, what I understand from you is that, you know, in monitoring terms, I don't know if there is any monitoring, uh, many person here or the results measurement person here. We talk about attribution and contribution. And it seems to be that remittance and its leverage to financial inclusion is contributing to most of the SDGs. And we talk about so much of investments, uh, money coming in, that's, that remittance brings in. It, it poses a question about what's the government role. How can government accelerate it using remittances to achieve SDGs? And, and you being from the ministry and from the government, Mr. Iqbal, what, what is your view of that? Where you see the government moving, you have given quite good examples on health and social secu security and other aspects of it. What's your view on that, of government role? How, how can we accelerate that? The government role is basically the devising the policies to uh, use the remittances in the right direction to get uh, the people of the country benefited. Uh, in Pakistan, uh, we, uh, the government introduces different schemes uh, at federal level as well as the provincial level. Uh, we have uh, some support fund programs uh, for uh, the uh, only for the people uh, living beyond, uh, below the poverty level and uh, the different members of the political uh, groups they recommend those persons and uh, they get the uh, extra amounts without doing anything because they have the uh, their the remittances are the main source of those funding, but the people of Pakistan, they are the main beneficiaries. But those only who are living in the below the poverty level. Uh, every year, the mm, uh, government has fixed some uh, amount in the uh, yearly budget as well to take part along with the remittances. Uh, for this year, for the next year, is about 124 billion. Uh, for the next year, 2018 and 19, and uh, the remittances, the cost of remitt the remittances goes into the uh, different kinds of projects and into the like health and education, uh, because these are also the SDGs. So, as far as come to Pakistan is concerned, um, it, because this is the second largest source of the uh, of the income in Pakistan uh, after exports. So we are almost $22 billion exports and $20 billion is our remittances. So we have to stick on that one to devise our policies according to our resources. So mainly these two policies are being introduced. As regards the other SDGs, since the welfare of the families are foremost important, that's why the government of Pakistan has not yet introduced any such policy of this one. But hope so that we will do that in future. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Robin, over to you. Okay. 
fee, as you said, is one of the largest constituency of regulators, right? And this is a very good platform for peer-to-peer -peer learning and everything else. From that standpoint, what is the role that you see of regulators in government in terms of leveraging remittances? Thank you for the question. Um, so we've talked quite a bit about the, the amounts of money involved in global remittance flows, but we haven't talked quite as much about uh, the channels. And it's quite a, another staggering statistic that 90% of those remittance transfers still involve cash, either they're uh, cash at both the send and receive end, or they may be sent uh, digitally, but still being cashed out at the other end, for example, through a Western Union or MoneyGram uh, agent. Uh, and this is really blunting the contribution that remittances can make to financial inclusion, and therefore, in turn, uh, blunting the contribution towards the sustainable development goals, because the majority of the funds received will be either spent in, in cash, or if they are, they're saved, they will be saved informally rather than in, a, uh, in an account in the formal financial system. Uh, and regulators have a very important um, catalytic uh, role here in driving uh, the shift from cash remittances to um, digital to digital uh, remittances. Um, and there's several things that they can, can do to achieve that that our Digital Financial Services Working Group is documenting right now in a, a guideline, as I, I mentioned. Um, of course, clear, um, predictable, uh, legal and regulatory frameworks that all actors can, can readily understand.